Are you listening? We'll just, if you guys want to just throw questions at me. Dealing with rejection as a, as a salesperson, as a, an entrepreneur, as a young CEO, pretty much in, in any case, especially when it comes to sales, it's fucking hard. And I, I talk a lot about this with my team because there's this emotion that starts to build up because you're really passionate. You know, salespeople are extremely passionate. They're, they're very type A in most cases. And, and they're quick to move, but when they, when they get hit that wall, um, they kind of, in my case, uh, especially in the beginning, I, I would tend to like crumble and fall apart. Um, and I remember my first phone call that I ever did uh, where I was uh, selling advertising and I picked up the phone and I called an auto uh, repair shop to try to sell them some advertising. And I said, hey, this is Paul. And I was really excited because I just got out of sales training and uh, you know, I said, do you have five minutes to talk about how we can generate more leads or some, some crazy shit uh, that I would never say now. But the guy, the guy on the other line says, you know, sounds like a sales call and just slammed the phone. He slammed the phone so freaking hard that it just, it destroyed me from the inside out. And I just sat at my desk, just staring at my computer screen and questioning every life decision that I've ever made because I'm like, I'm going to fucking suck at this. I'm the shittiest salesperson in the world. How am I going to sell this shit? I just got hung up on. Um, and about an hour later, uh, I, uh, I kind of regained my composure and, uh, and then continued on and, and kind of fought through it. Um, and I didn't know what I was doing at the time. And as I, as I kind of learned in the sales game further and further, it, it became more evident that sales and, and rejection is not an emotional thing. It's a, it's a mechanical thing. It's a process thing. And so if you get rejected or if you're on a phone call and you fucking botch your pitch, okay, you can't be all down on yourself about botching your pitch. You have to think about how you can improve your pitch and take the emotion out of it. And that's one of the hardest things to do. And the way that I do it is I tell myself, I, I tell myself, this is where I fucked up, right? I take ownership for that. And then I actually take steps to improve that. And those two, those two things ha both have to happen. If you improve on something, but you don't take ownership for the fuck up, then you can't recognize the failure and you can't recognize the opportunity because failure in any way, whether it's your pitch, whether it's your outreach, whether it's uh, the proposal, what, whatever you have done in that sales process or within a sales call needs analysis, following and tying in uh, the, the, the pain points, whatever it is, those things need to be identified as, as failures. And then you have to go back to the drawing board and say, how can I do this better? And when you have to hit quota, right? And when there's a lot of stress and when you're, uh, you know, when you're not there, it starts to, you know, all fall down on you. And I've had that happen to me many times. And one of the things that I always try to think about is I try to move that out of the way, move that quota out of the way, move all those barriers from my mind out of the way so that I could just pretend that it's everything's okay. Because that stress puts stress on you, puts stress on your voice. And so it destroys your confidence when you're on the call. So no matter what happens, take the emotion out of it and make sure that you think about use yourself as, as a machine, as mechanical as you can be. Now you can add your personalities, you can spruce it up, right? But right now as a salesperson, as a young CEO trying to get your product out there as a, whoever it is, think of yourself as, you know, a, a bottle of, of seltzer water, right? And that bottle of seltzer water is going to be the bottle of seltzer water. That's all that's in there, right? Now you can sprinkle in your orange flavor into the water. You can sprinkle in your fruit punch, whatever it is. You can add that, but stay what you are at the core and don't change that. Because if you do, that's going to shift everything. So take the emotion out of it and be that person and realize that you can add whatever you want to the mix, but you have to be strong at the core. Otherwise you're never going to be able to improve and the emotional, you know, hills will eventually come at you. And, uh, one final thought about that is a lot of times what I think I'm doing wrong isn't actually wrong. Um, 
it just needs to be different, you know? So it's not always a matter of right and wrong. It's more a matter of, can I identify what I'm missing in my approach, in, in the mechanics of my pitch, in the mechanics of my, my business, in the mechanics of my process, and then can I tweak that knob? Can I fix that piece? Can I pull out that, that light bulb from the string of lights because there's a short and it turns all the rest of the lights off on, on the Christmas tree lights, right? Can I pull that out and put in a new one? But first, you've got to identify which one because there's a lot of lights. And so find the light and, and, and make the switch and, and that's the way you got to think about facing uh, a rejection and obstacles in sales. I mean, at least I do. Comment below and let me know what you think about it because it's a really big topic and I know uh, burnout in sales is, is huge. So um, I'd be happy to uh, talk further about some of these things that I mentioned or uh, answer any questions that you have. Thanks.